everyone, long time no see, uh, so welcome back to my channel. Now today I wanted to film a video that's a little bit different to what I usually film on my channel. I wanted to do a video today on my experiences of losing a friend to cancer. I wanted to talk about it because today is World Cancer Day. It is a day for everyone to come together to help to raise awareness and to raise money and to fight this truly awful and disgusting disease. I have lost someone very close to me to cancer. My friend was called Charlotte Eads and I met her here on YouTube because she made YouTube videos just like I did and I met her back in the spring of 2015 I believe it was and she basically commented on some of my videos and we started talking and we planned to meet up. I met her in Brighton in the summer and I filmed a vlog as did she which I'll link down below and we had a lovely time and we really bonded that day and we just really hit it off straight away and our friendship kind of blossomed from there really. She was honestly one of the most amazing and lovely friends that I could have ever asked for. I really felt like I'd gained a true friend in Charlotte. Charlotte could understand me on a level that nobody else could understand me in so many ways that not everyone else could understand me because she had experiences of what it's like to live with an illness just like I did. Of course her illness is very different to what my illness is but she really got me in so many ways and of course because she did YouTube as well I felt like I gained a really good friend in Charlotte and someone I could talk to about so many different things and indeed I did and I think you know when you find someone special in your life when they mean something to you and when you can really trust them and relate to them. I felt that way with Charlotte, I instantly felt comfortable around her and she was just like one of those people where you could talk to her about anything and she wouldn't judge you at all. And at the time that I met Charlotte in Brighton, her cancer was being managed and she was really hopeful that one day that she would be in remission. She was doing a lot better. Of course there were things that she was still finding it difficult to do because she couldn't drive at that point. She was doing really well and she was really excited for the future and we were talking about all of our plans and at the time Charlotte was 18 and I was 20, God, I was 21 I think or 22. No, I was definitely 21. So she was 18 and I was 21 and we were talking about our plans and Charlotte had all these ideas to go to university. She wanted to write a book, she wanted to raise awareness and money for cancer. She had all these ideas in her head of what she wanted to do and she had a very clear plan of what she wanted to do to advance with her life and she was really confident that that was going to happen. Basically in September she got the news that there was a growth on her brain and uh, she had a biopsy and it turned out it was a really rare form of brain cancer which was known as glioblastoma and it very quickly turned into a grade 4 brain tumour so it became very serious and um, it just progressively got really bad, it got so bad very quickly and within the space of a few months her health really deteriorated and on the 24th of February 2016 she passed away and that was actually six days after her birthday she turned 19 on the, on the 18th of February 2016 so um, as you can imagine it was very hard and it's now the two year anniversary since her passing or it's coming up to the two year anniversary and this year on the 18th of February she would have turned 21 I mean for me, I remember what I did for my 21st birthday and I have been thinking a lot what would she have been doing right now if she was still here, what would she have been planning for her birthday, what would she have decided to do, what, she, what would she have bought as a present for herself, what would she have asked for and knowing Charlotte she would have definitely gone out and bought some lovely Louis Vuitton bag and put it on her, what I got for my birthday videos. For me lately it's come to a point where I wonder a lot of the time what she would be doing right now. When she first died, up until now, I've gone through an emotional whirlwind. I don't think anything has ever picked me up and shook me to the core as much as Charlotte's passing. Now, I'm not a stranger to losing someone to cancer because I lost another person in my family to brain cancer as well, but they were more of a distant relative and I didn't know them as well. And although I grieved and well, I felt very sad at their passing, I think losing Charlotte, who became a very close friend over that year and because we spoke so much and because she was so honest about how she felt and she confided in me it made it really really hard and I remember she told me the news about her scan and that they would found some kind of growth on her brain on 
the day before my graduation and I just remember feeling so incredibly guilty and so incredibly awful that there was me celebrating my graduation and putting all these pictures on my Facebook and you know celebrating the fact that I'd graduated with my degree and yet my friend was having to deal with this diagnosis and not knowing where it would lead and there was nothing I could do about it and I think for me that was one of the most awful things throughout the whole time up until her passing especially when she got the diagnosis so from September till February when she was talking to me about how her diagnosis was progressing and also when she got to a point where she couldn't speak anymore and she couldn't text because of the fact that her brain tumor was impairing her mobility and her dexterity. I got updates from Charlotte's mum Alex. There was nothing I could do about it. I couldn't physically take that pain away from her you know no one could give me a sword and say right fight her tumour for her and get rid of it and I honestly believe that if there would have been anything I could have done if I could have done anything to have got rid of it if I could have done anything to alleviate her pain and to have made this awful terrible cancer go away I would have done anything that I could to have made it go away but there was absolutely nothing I could do I was absolutely powerless to stop it from progressing into what it was I think initially for me one of the first things I felt when Charlotte died was denial I just couldn't believe that this had happened I kept thinking right up until she died no this is this is going to get better her consultant is going to find something they're going to find some clinical trial or they're going to find something that can help they're going to either cease the tumor or they're going to do something to make it significantly regress and she's gonna get better, she's gonna get the therapy she needs and she's gonna get better and I just kept wanting to believe that and I just kept believing that right up until the very end I wanted to believe that she would get better and then when she died I was in such denial because I thought this is so unfair and she was just so young, she was younger than me, she was 19 and cancer had claimed her, she had died because of this awful cancer and I just felt to myself why her and why has this happened, why does this happen to anyone, why does anyone have to go through this awful disease, why does anyone have to deal with this. I really felt angry because she dealt with it once before, she'd had to go through hair loss and chemo and she'd had to go through all these really invasive procedures to get to the point where she was and it just killed me because she was so happy, she was so happy that things were getting better for her and then just as things were starting to look up and she was going up with her channel and things were looking to be really bright and positive for her, this happened to her. And this denial really swept over me because I didn't want to believe that she was gone. And I still have her texts on my phone, I still have her messages from Facebook and I still keep them. And I think when she first died, I just kept hoping against hope that she would call me or that there would be a text on my phone or there'd be something that she wouldn't have been completely gone. Soon after that I think anger and frustration came with it because like I'd said I really felt angry that cancer had taken this wonderful person away who had so much left to give and she had so many aspirations for her future. She was gonna make something of her life and there was no doubt about that. There was absolutely no doubt about that and she had all these ideas and goals and then cancer had just taken that all away from her. But not only that, cancer took away an amazing friend from me. It took away a daughter, it took away a sister, it took away a friend, it took away someone that meant so much to so many different people and also her YouTube channel, people who loved her, people who really found solace and comfort in her videos and what she was talking about, about cancer and about the messages that she was putting out there. And I cannot tell you how much I admire Charlotte as a person because even when her cancer got to its very worst point, she documented her cancer journey from start to finish and there was nothing that stopped her from filming a video because she wanted to show people what cancer did. She wanted to not only show people that she was still there and she was still fighting, but she also wanted people to realise that this is what cancer can do to people and she wanted to raise awareness of the disease and of cancer and I can't be more proud of Charlotte for doing that. I am in absolute admiration that Charlotte did that, not for herself, but purely in the name of raising awareness of cancer. And I think that's such an admirable thing that she did. Guilt did soon follow afterwards. I think guilt was with me throughout the whole time that Charlotte got her diagnosis right up until the very end. And even now, there was nothing that I could have done to take the cancer away from her. And I know that, but part of me wished there would have been something that I could have done. I don't think I'm ever gonna get over that. now. I'm at a point where I just feel sad about what's happened. I feel incredibly sad and 
there are so many days where I wake up in the morning and I think about her and I just feel this wave of overwhelming sadness that she's no longer here and I can't talk to her. I've had dreams about Charlotte, I've had dreams where we're both together again. I had one dream a while ago where we were in this really fancy handbag shop and she was talking me into getting a really expensive designer bag and she was saying oh you're gonna love this you're gonna get it and I vividly remember it and I, I can even tell you what outfit she was wearing what she was doing what she smelt like it felt so real it felt like one of the most real things ever and then I wake up and it's not real and to discover that she's not there it was beautiful because I, I was felt like I was with her again but it was also incredibly sad because she, the realization dawned on me that she wasn't there and that I couldn't call her, I couldn't Skype her, I couldn't see her again, I couldn't get trained to Brighton and go shopping with her again. And I think that still stays with me. I feel like I've been robbed of a friend. The fact is that cancer took her away from me and um, I don't have that friend anymore. I don't, I don't have her with me anymore and I miss her so much. I can't tell you how much I miss her and I, every day I think about her. I mean, I have a picture, me and, uh, me and her a picture when we went to Brighton. I have it on my desk always and... I'll always have reminders of her. A massive comfort to me is watching her videos because she has got so many videos on her YouTube channel, so many videos on there that I can watch and look back on and I feel that they're a massive comfort because I'll never forget the sound of her voice. I'll always be able to watch videos when I'm missing her and feel like a part of her still with me and I think that's a massive comfort to me because I can still go back and watch her again and there's still so much of Charlotte left on the internet. To think that she thought that she wouldn't make a mark on the world, <laughs> my god, she did, she did. Her videos have reached, I think Alex told me the other day that her videos have got over 2 million views. Alex, if I'm wrong you'll have to correct me, but I think it's over 2 million views. That is incredible and she's been aired on so many documentaries and news articles, her story has gone viral and people loved Charlotte for what she represented and what she stood for and I feel very privileged to have had her as a friend in my life and my only wish was that I could have spent more time with her and that I could have had more time with her and I'll, I'll always wish that. What Charlotte stood for was incredibly beautiful and inspiring. She was a person who fought cancer and raised awareness of cancer and even now in her passing her legacy is still about fighting cancer and raising awareness of it and helping others. I can't tell you how proud I am of Charlotte's family and also Cressida the friend of Charlotte's mum who have set up the charity Charlotte's Bag which has been created to raise funds and awareness of the brain cancer that Charlotte died from. That is such an admirable thing to do and they did it not too long after she passed away and the charity is doing so well now. I just hope that the charity continues to grow and advance every day and that they get the recognition that they deserve. We need to find a cure for every single cancer out there. I do want to raise awareness for the fact that there is a very small amount of money that goes into funding research into brain cancer which is so incredibly sad to hear which is why Charlotte's family started up the charity Charlotte's Bag to raise money for research into brain cancer and what I want to say to people right now here and now is that if you are currently going through cancer, if you're a friend or a family member of someone who is going through cancer, I sincerely wish you or them the absolute best. I sincerely hope that things get better for them. I hope that they recover and I hope that things look up for them and I hope that you go on to live an amazing future and you do all the things in your life that you want to do and that you have the best life possible because you absolutely deserve it. You really, really do. And I also want to say something to anyone who is a friend to someone who is living with cancer. Do not feel afraid to speak to them. Do not cut off communication with them because Charlotte found that when she had cancer, people didn't speak to her as much. Her friends kind of drifted away from her and that became very difficult for her because she needed that connection. She wanted to have that connection so that she could feel normal and that she could feel like her life was still semi-normal. So if you're a friend of someone who is dealing with cancer, don't be afraid to pick up the phone and to just send them a text or to just send them a random video on Facebook of a cat doing something stupid or to offer to go out with them shopping or to just go over and see them and watch a film and it honestly makes all the difference because Charlotte often said that so much she needed that 
to have her normality and she needed that normality and that was why she started her YouTube channel because she wanted to create a space where everyone could come together and that she could create a community where everyone could talk and I think that was just so inspiring that Charlotte wanted to do that she wanted to help people who had cancer and her videos always inspire me every single day and whenever I feel down or whenever I feel deflated I always go back and look at her videos and it's honestly a massive comfort to me but it's second to having her here which I will always wish that she was still here and I think every day of my life I'll always miss her I don't think I'll ever truly get over losing Charlotte I don't think anyone gets over losing someone but I owe it to Charlotte to live my life and I owe it to Charlotte to educate people about things like invisible disabilities and I want to continue to be positive because Charlotte stood for positivity she was one of the most lovely courteous positive and kind people that I've ever met and I Feel like I owe it to her to try and take some of Charlotte's essence and what her beliefs were and translate that into my own life somehow. So that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting it. Don't forget today is World Cancer Day so if you can do anything to raise awareness or funds for cancer that would be amazing whether you can share something, whether you can donate some money, whatever you can do that would be absolutely incredible and I will leave links to Charlotte's charity down below if you want to go and check that out and also to her channel as well I think if you can help in any way whether that's just sharing the link to the charity or donating some money or just sharing Charlotte's channel that would be absolutely fantastic I'm sure Charlotte's family would be absolutely delighted if you could that'd be amazing thank you so much for watching this video today and I'll see you guys in my next one bye